Good evening, or buonasera, to remain in theme. Um, the uh, Raices de Palki Award uh, Translation Prize was judged by three people, myself, Jeffrey Brock, and Victoria Surliuga. And um, I'm gonna read, we thought it fitting that I would read comments by Jeffrey Brock since he too is a, a very accomplished translator. But before I do that, I just want to give a shout out to Alfredo de Palchi and the late Sonia Raiz's job for having created the foundation which continues to support a number of prizes, a number of poetry prizes, a number of translation prizes, and um, we just need more and more of that, so. The Virtues of, of Locomotrix, Jennifer Scapettone's daring new translation of Amelia Rosselli's selected poetry and prose, be begin with the title itself, which slyly prepares the reader for the polylinguistic fair and the self-proclaimed infirm mind that follows. In Scapettone, Rosselli has found an inventive, aesthetically kindred translator, one who rightfully chooses to startle when Rosselli startles and not to gloss, to maintain, that is, rather than tame, the singularities of Rosselli's capacious and difficult work. But the word maintain makes it sound too easy, as if the translator had only to leave well enough alone, when, of course, what is often required is the invention of English of sympathetic singularities, which Scapettone, a poet herself, provides in abundance. As if that weren't enough, the poems themselves are framed by Scapettone's excellent introduction and by well-chosen prose selections and helpful bibliographies and notes. Locomotrix is an exemplary volume. I present to you Jennifer Scapettone. Thank you so much. I'm going to read five short poems by Amelia Rosselli, spanning four of her books, and composed between 1959 and 1977 with a wish that she were here with us. Rosselli was the first modern woman Italian poet to receive various honors, and this is another milestone. My thanks to the many people who believed in this project and supported it despite its challenges over 12 years of translation, especially Barbara Spackman, Ann Carson, and my editor, Randy Petilos. And thanks again to those who made this prize possible and to give visibility to Italian poetry. From Variazioni Belliche, bellicose variations. I was, I flew, I fell a tremble into the arms of God. And may this final sigh be my entire being. And may the wave repay, bound in difficult union, my blood. And from that supreme ruse may death become vermilion be rendered me. And I, who from the heart felt riots of my comrades detached that anxiousness to die, will relish at last the age of reason. And may all the white Riviera flowers and all the weight of God strike at my prisons. From Serie Ospedaliera, hospital series. Seventy destitutes and a shirt that ripped itself up in the null. By some caprice I lay back in the null and all was laurel and beneficence, benefacted the king of the poor, camel that would crawl. A rain, hard, thin, penetrated. In need of assistance, I penetrated rooms furnished to a real life that with capital letters drew itself away from mine, courteously obliging were the condemned to death. 
Invitations crept along the rainy cornerstones of a city permeable. Not one hidden beast dusted the goats that marched ecstatic upon the mounts of the Trinity. A camel, two Indians, and the people master of all the arts, music and mathematics, the fury of realizable dreams. Lost in the basin of shadows, the white spider webs and the dust on lashes, specks and small pearls beneath the rain most wretched, settled for the best, a life closed. Sweet chaos, a visionary sweetening brings me tired into your square garden perfectly apt for liberty, for the libidinal, and for each thing that in ensemble draws distension from your so changeful face. In the interior of this Pacific little park, I see you depart with pace still slow for another garden, and know that rainfall I will await your figure's total resurgence from the cemetery of my penumbras, my thoughts. Deaf, you seem uncertain still at the entrance, iron wires well rectified toward a possible departure of yours, and all around the courteous void seems preoccupied with something other than your return. It seems driving you off to infest you with a punishment. I do not fall, but always am that piece by piece dies. And in this liquefaction of aptitudes, the plane of the park capsizes, the scent of the forest silenced, and all around still pours off the little joy of being nearly saved from documento, document. Graft in living your fault, a tailing. I did not come forward with my flowers because you were still meditative, the heart curved par excellence in its abode, watching to see if some unpublished truth could still provoke me. Like an old sadness, the piazza at 2 a.m. was deserted and distant. Parasentiments, bruised circles, the useless rounds. In the guarded sense of the word, you believed yourself free for an instant. From Appunti Sparsi e Persi, Notes Scattered and Lost. It has very deep roots, in fact, in your heart, which bleeds uninterruptedly. Your romanticism, I speak to the walls, which are me. Your romanticism slits your wrists. Living, but this is not living. Living, you realize you have misinterpreted the toad, never having swallowed it. The egress from the cavernous forests was green in measured width and commitment, but its rugged rocks did not reek of the joy that had invaded me. Instead, a plow, patient, dug its history in the thick of the world. Thank you.